Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Every year, crimes go unsolved here in Southern California. Loved ones are left waiting. I'm Joy Benedict, and as a news reporter, I have covered countless crimes and countless homicides, and I know that sometimes the victims of these crimes are forgotten almost as quickly as the headlines fade. So tonight, on Crime Stoppers Case Files, we take another look at the crimes still lingering unsolved in our communities. Let's get started. It's three days before Christmas in 2009. Nabil Tawab, a local business owner and young father, was holding his company's Christmas party. He walked outside for a cigarette, but he never made it back to that party. He was murdered at his car, and this is his story. Nabil was a very happy person. He was a very peaceful father. He would enjoy playing with his daughters. Uh, riding the bicycles, playing even with the dolls. I have several pictures when Nabi was playing with his daughters, the dolls. He would be the, the camp for the Barbie. And he really wanted to spend time with the kids. He was coming from a very disturbing divorce. So anytime that the kids would be around, he would like to spend 100% of the time with them. The kids will help us to prepare things and we will all cook together and then get in the pool and mostly cooking and, and swimming with the kids. Nabil had two daughters and I have uh, three children and together we have a family. I was conducting a real estate seminar and um, Nabil was very successful in helping clients with any mistakes that they would have in their credit. So I invited him to be one of the speakers at the seminar and that's how I met him. He was a very kind man, very patient, uh, very smart and bright in regards to his field. He always had a goal and it was to help all the people that have problems in their credit reports. He was always trying to make sure that they were treated fairly. His dream was to write a book about it and he said he got so much um, damage through his life paying very high interest rates that he's not supposed to, and that everything he had learned through that field, he wanted to pass it on to the other ones because he didn't think it was fair. For mistakes they make, he ended up paying more money. I met him about eight years ago uh, through a friend and started doing computer work for him. When he first started his company, back when it was just him in the office, and that was it, no employees got his computer set up and really managed all of his computers since then and built a friendship all along all those years. You know, I have a lot of customers of my own who I go in, fix their computers. There's not, you know, a whole relationship there. With Nabil, it was more like a friend. You know, he would invite me over uh, to dinner on weekends, you know, tell me to bring the kids over all the time, and, you know, come swim in the pool. So it was more like a friendship than an employer type relationship. And it really showed me his character and the fact that he was so caring. Uh, always asked me how I was doing, always asked me how my kids were doing. It's really loving and caring. We will spend almost 24 hours together. I work in the office. We will work from nine till six. And then we will go home and take care of the family. Our last trip, we went to San Francisco. Nabe was very happy because he was able to bring his daughters with us. I didn't know that was going to be my engagement. He just told me, you know, make sure that you pack the most beautiful clothes for the kids and for you. He says, we are celebrating the happiness that we're together in our first trip as a family. Remember when we got to the hotel, uh, Nabe was pretty busy on the computer and planning something, but we cannot figure out what was it until the night came and uh, he took us right by the San Francisco Bridge. He took a lot of pictures with me and the kids. And then he hugged me and he said he was very thankful for all the happiness I was bringing to his life. Then it was pretty cold and the kids said, 
wanted to go home. And he says, okay, well, we'll come back tomorrow. And we left. The minute we arrived at the hotel, he told the kids, we will be back, we were going to go out. Now mommy and daddy are gonna go out for a little sightseeing. We went back to the same place. And then he proposed. He asked me if I wanted to marry him. And he um, told me he was going to be with me for the rest of my life. In other news this afternoon, sheriff's detectives are investigating the cold-blooded killing of a businessman in Stevenson Branch. He had just stepped out from his company's Christmas party when he was shot. Welcome back. We now return to the story of Nabil Tawab. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, somebody needs to come here really quick. Somebody was just hit over the head in front of the building and he's bleeding from the head. Okay, what is the address? 2650, the old road. This is the house, apartment, or business? Uh, it's a business. It's right in front of the Wells Fargo building, across the of the old road in Valencia. But what was he hit with? I have no idea. Somebody found him out there and they just came running in here and one of the kids came in with blood all over his hand and said he's, he's bleeding from his head. Right. Is this in front of your store there? All right, it's in front of the Wells Fargo building. He okay. would not have a cigarette. On December 22nd, 2009, at about 6.45 in the evening, Nabil Tawab uh, was shot and killed as he was leaving his business at 26650 The Old Road in Stevenson's Ranch. The victim, uh, Nabil Tawab, he was the owner of a uh, credit repair business. The credit expert is located on the bottom floor of the uh, Wells Fargo building. Uh, he was uh, giving a party for his employees at uh, his place of business. We're supposed to have a small Christmas party with employees. And we have a little, like a small kitchen within, inside the office. I was invited to the Christmas party. Uh, again, not being a formal employee of the company, um, but just his friend and working at the company. And I was running late and I texted him, I'm on my way, and he texted back saying, great, food's here. The victim was having a meal with his fiancée at the time. Uh, when he finished his meal, he told his fiancée, Claudia, that uh, he was going to go outside and smoke a cigarette. I arrived to the party that evening and I'm walking into the kitchen, all the employees are there, everyone's eating, and I ask, you know, oh, where's Nabil? They said, oh, he must be either in his office or outside smoking, and I uh, decided to walk outside. It was fairly common for him to be standing outside, having a, a cigarette, taking a break. Walk outside, look around, and don't really see him. Look over to the left and see where his car is, the lights on in the car. As I get closer, I see that the doors open and I can see him lying on the floor. He was lying in a position almost like he was looking underneath that front driver's seat. So I walk up and, hey, how you doing? As I look over, he's not grabbing something. I'm shaking him, Nabil, you okay? And then yeah, as I see him, I can see his eyes just glazed over, knew something was wrong, thought he had passed out. He discovered Nabil's body uh, slumped uh, on the ground uh, at the open driver's door of his uh, white BMW. He ran back inside the business, uh, the employees came out, they called 911. Jason walk in and he says, something happened to Nabil, I guess he passed out. And I ran outside and all the people from the party ran after me. Somebody had turned him and saw blood lift up his shirt and I can actually see gunshots, holes. At that point, my heart just fell out. Paramedics responded. Uh, they took him to the hospital there in Santa Clarita where uh, he was pronounced dead. We know he left his office to go outside. We know he was, he was discovered at his open driver's door on the ground. His business, uh, the credit expert, um, was on the, uh, on the bottom floor of the building. It was just off the main lobby by the elevators. Uh, it was only maybe 100 feet from where his car was parked, just outside the main entrance to the building. He walked out the main doors to the building. Uh, his car was parked just to the south of the main doors, uh, directly in front of the Wells Fargo Bank, uh, right around the corner from where the ATM machines are. Uh, his car was facing the bank. So what we believe happened 
was he went to go outside, he opened up his driver's door, and as he was reaching in to get his cigarettes, uh, the assailant approached from behind him and then shot him. He was shot uh, several times to the torso and once to the back of the head. We found several witnesses that heard several gunshots. They heard the sound of a motorcycle leaving the scene very rapidly. They looked towards the scene, the parking lot, and uh, directly after the, the gunshots, they saw a motorcycle speeding away from the location. Uh, it didn't stop for the red light, and it left uh, northbound the old road, at, at which point you know, it was uh, out of view to the witnesses. I'm Los Angeles County Sheriff Lee Baca. The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department has partnered with the LAPD and other municipal police departments throughout our county to form the Los Angeles Regional Crime Stoppers Organization. Crime Stoppers is an important law enforcement tool, a proactive approach to removing dangerous criminals from our streets. Each week on this television program, we will share the facts about unsolved cases, and you will have the opportunity to submit information that may help investigators without ever having to give your name. I encourage you to provide us any information you may have. I thank you for joining us and doing your part to make our community safer. Tonight, police are trying to find out who killed the boss outside a company Christmas party. 37-year-old Nabil Tawab, a husband and father of three, died at a hospital after he was shot outside the bank building on the old road in Stevenson Ranch. He had left the party to get something from his car when a gunman opened fire. It's just shocking to have something like that happen here. I mean, it, it's a safe community. You know, Santa Clarita gets you know, noted every year under the FBI statistics as you know, like the third safest city in the country to live in. So this is really strange. Detectives do not have either a suspect or motive in this murder. On December 22nd in 2009, at approximately 6.45 in the evening, Nabil Tawab left his party uh, to have a, a cigarette break. Uh, when we discovered him, he was uh, at his open driver's door, uh, just inside the driver's door, uh, on the console, there was a pack of cigarettes. His car was parked just to the south of the main doors, uh, directly in front of the Wells Fargo Bank, uh, right around the corner from where the ATM machines are. So what we believe happened was he opened up his driver's door, and as he was reaching in to uh, get his cigarettes, the assailant approached from behind him and then shot him. He was shot uh, several times to the torso and once to the back of the head. We found several witnesses they heard the sound of a motorcycle leaving the scene very rapidly. Uh, we did find uh, uh, another witness who heard a similar thing. He looked out the window who happened to be inside the building. Uh, he, he heard the screeching tires and he recalled seeing uh, a car leaving the parking lot. So we have either a motorcycle or a car leaving uh, directly after uh, the sound of, of gunfire. You know, we believe there, there might be at least one witness out there. Uh, we know that the old road is a it's a busy thoroughfare uh, in that area, and uh, there has to be some type of witness that had to have seen something. They probably don't know what they saw, but you know, if they were in the area on December 22nd, around uh, 6.45 in the evening, and they saw a motorcycle uh, leaving very fast from uh, the Wells Fargo Bank parking lot, uh, running a red light, uh, we'd like to find that person. Neville and I, would, we were only engaged, so my my life and my family and his kids' life changed completely. I didn't have any rights to his kids, so they have to go back to their mom. They miss the friend. They miss the father figure that he was for them. Nabil was very on a Christmas day, and there is no more Christmas for our kids. They have that very sad and tragic memory that on Christmas day he was getting buried. We truly don't have any closure. We don't understand what happened. But it is very difficult that there is a person out there that is enjoying their life and their families, and we are not, because there is somebody out there capable to destroy and change somebody's life in one second. The kids keep asking, why did this happen? Why do we have to be punished? And I say, you know, this is 
We don't understand. This is life. And it's very difficult to answer these questions. Um, we don't think robbery was a motive because uh, he was wearing some expensive jewelry. Uh, his watch was inside the car. It was in plain view. And if it had been a robbery, I, you know, I believe that uh, a robber would have absolutely taken his, at least his wallet that was the sitting there. I believe that the assailant approached the victim, uh, shot him, and then immediately got onto either that motorcycle or uh, the vehicle and, and, and fled the scene. We're asking for the public's help. Nabil Tawab was a 38-year-old man who had two children he loved very much. He had a fiance that cared about him. She really wants to find out what happened in this case. He had a lot of close friends uh, that are concerned and uh, they're always calling us and they want to know what's happening. And this is a murder I like to solve. So if anyone has information, I'd really appreciate it. You know, they, they called myself, Detective Peter Hecht, my partner, Sergeant Steve Rubino, at 323-890-5500. Or they can call Crime Stoppers, or they can text Crime Stoppers. Any information anyone can provide would really be appreciated. Nabil Tawab was engaged at the time of his death. He never got to walk down the aisle. He never saw his children grow up. There were people around that night. It was only 6.40 in the evening. So think back to December 22nd, 2009. Did you see anything? Have you heard anything since? If so, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or log on to LACrimestoppers.org where you can email or even text an anonymous tip. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers Case Files. Police also need your help identifying a man involved in a robbery. It happened in the McDonald's on West Slauson in Los Angeles. Here's Detective Clarence Williams. On July 30th, 2011 at approximately 11 o'clock, uh, McDonald's was robbed at 5015 Slauson Avenue. The McDonald's is located in a small strip mall. There are other businesses there. It's in a community referred to as Ladera View Park. The suspect is a male black, about 6'3", 200 pounds. He was wearing a windbreaker type jacket with the word security on the back as well as on the front. We have surveillance video. And on the video, you'll see the suspect go to the front register, order food or a drink. You'll see him go to the soda fountain machine, get a drink. He'll then go in the lobby area direction. Those cameras were not working at the time. And then he went to the front counter and branched a handgun ordered the employees to empty the cash registers as well as contents of the safe, which is in the back of the restaurant. There's still customers going through the drive-through as he's doing this. It's believed that two to three cars uh, drove through the drive-through during the robbery. He told the young lady working the uh, drive-through to just go out on his business as usual while he dealt with the manager who was emptying of the safe contents or trying to get to the safe. He uh, appeared calm throughout the incident. Once he takes the money out of the uh, safe, he exits the store. He walked through the parking lot, then ran through the parking lot to uh, westbound Slauson and out of their view. He wasn't wearing a mask or anything, so they were able to give a composite drawing. Noteworthy things about the suspect is he's a male black, 6'3", about 200 pounds, 30 to 35 years old with black hair, brown eyes. He was wearing a a windbreaker type jacket with the word security on the back as well as on the front and a baseball cap with the word security across the front of it. The weapon was a semi-automatic handgun, blue steel. For anyone who has any information about this robbery, please call me Detective Clarence Williams at 310-482-6028 or you can call Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. Take a look at this suspect sketch. Our suspect is a black male, about 6'3", 200 pounds. He's about 30 to 35 years old, and at the time of the crime, he was wearing a jacket and ball cap that said security. If you know this man, if you remember this crime, contact LA Regional Crime Stoppers. The number is 1-800-222-TIPS. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files. Remember, we are here every week with more crimes and more families needing answers. These are your neighbors. This is your community, and you can make a difference.